Hi, everybody. My name is Mano Marks. I work at Google, and I'm being a little blinded by these projectors. But um, my job is uh, I'm a developer programs engineer, and I work with KML. So what that means is I help people who have questions with KML want to incorporate KML into their applications. Um, this is Pamela Fox. She is my counterpart on Google Maps. And we are going to present to you today the um, the <laughs> quick and dirty KML creation. <laughs> your Pamela, your your, uh, your laptop is not behaving. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. <laughs> Enough of those um, disruptions. So um, uh, before I get started, I want to introduce a couple of other important people who are in the room right now. Uh, there's Josie Wernicke, who wrote the KML documentation. She is our tech writer extraordinaire. There is uh, Michael Ashbridge, who is a, um, he's one of two. <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> He's one of the engineers who works um, who works on KML and was one of the key people involved both in uh, the development of KML and in the uh, KML standards uh, process, which I can talk to anybody about or or he could later. Um, and uh, there is Michael Weissmalik, who is the product manager for KML, and uh, John Gardner, who writes the KML user guide and also. Um, I'm sorry, the Google Earth user guide, and uh, also has uh, blogs about uh, Google Earth. So did I miss any uh, important Googlers in the room? Any unimportant Googlers? OK. Uh, <laughs> so let me um, tell you a little bit about what we're doing here. Um, I think it was about uh, two months ago, Pamela came up with the idea of having a geo developer, a Google Geo developer series, which would be where we explore some of the um, the hopefully some of the uh, more practical and also lesser known aspects of some of the uh, APIs that Google uses. Um, and we thought we would start out with one of the practical basic ones, which is just how to get started with KML, which is one of these questions that, that comes up uh, quite frequently. So, uh, so that's what we're doing today. Quick and dirty KML creation using, um, using um, tools that Google has created for doing that. <coughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, uh, using Google Earth, show you the basics of KML creation. And Pamela is going to go through and talk about using uh, Google My Maps and, um, and the, the Spreadsheet Mapper and talk a little bit about the, uh, the Maps API as well. So uh, at any time, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Remember, you are being videotaped. Uh, so <laughs> anything you say may be going up on YouTube. Um, and if you, um, so seriously though, if, you know, feel free to stop me if I'm talking too fast or you just want to, you're really interested in any particular issue or you want to see something explored a little bit more in depth. And I'm getting signaled. Yes? Uh, since you're going to speak about uh, spreadsheet mapper, I should probably introduce myself as well. I'm Christian Adams. I work at Google.org and I help them to build that product. Ah, excellent. Sweet. Okay. Great. Um, so. That being said, uh, any questions before I get started? Yes? Um, why did you guys build Google Earth? Okay. <laughs> I told him to ask that question out, out in the hall, so I didn't have to answer it more than once. Um, why did we build Google Earth? So Google Earth was originally built by a company called uh, Keyhole, which we, we acquired, um, which uh, KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language. Keyhole is the, from that company. Um, why we originally built Google Earth or why we acquired it is because we are strongly committed to there being more content on the web. We believe that organizing all the world's information means organizing all the geographical and geographically tagged information, essentially, geographically based information. So um, everybody says to me, well, how do you make money off of this? We make money off of search and ads on search. And yes, there are ads on search results actually look sometime. Uh, um, I won't tell you to click on them. Um, and that includes uh, search for geographic content. So we create these applications because we believe strongly that there should be more uh, content that is accessible and uh, presentable on the web. And that's how we make our money off of it. And, uh, and so all these free applications that you see, that's, that's why they're free. Because we, 
want you to have the ability to organize your and present your own information and other people to search them. And we believe that's a, a good business model. Okay, cool. Any, uh, any other questions before I get started? Okay, I am going to jump right into it. So um, first of all, tell me, uh, show of hands, who, is, uh, who has used KML before? Okay, great. Who has created KML before? Good, good. So this should not be too difficult. And I assume uh, everybody who raised their hands uh, has also used Google Earth before? Yes? Okay, cool. Um, all right, so <coughs> this will be uh, then probably the quickest part of the presentation. So um, basically, just a quick review for the folks that listening at home. Uh, we, KML is a KEOL markup language. It is an XML uh, markup language that is used to describe geographic presentation data. So um, its job is to show you things in, uh, in Google Earth or in a Earth browser. It is used in, uh, in many Google properties and particularly Google Earth and Google Maps. It is also um, being released as a standard so we are giving it to the, OG, the Open Geospatial Consortium, the OGC, and that um, means that other, um, other companies are now starting to, uh, to adopt it, including, for instance, uh, Microsoft and Yahoo both have incorporated KML into some of their products, either in consuming or, <coughs> or producing it. And there are many other applications out there that use it. So let me uh, go over the basics of creating KML using Google Earth. Now, I, I really like this part of the presentation because often people, including people at Google, who have used KML for quite a long time, don't realize that this is a, ca a capability that you can have in Google, um, in Google Earth. Thank so, like Pamela. <laughs> so, the most basic thing you can do in uh, in a geo browser in, in in anything is to say this is here. So you use a place mark. So in Google Earth, you click on add a place mark. You give it a title. I'm going to call this test place mark because I'm not feeling particularly um, uh, particularly eloquent today. I'm going to give it a description. Um, this is Pamela's house. It's not true. <laughs> it is not actually true. <laughs> we do not give out the addresses on YouTube videos of Google employees. No. Um, you can select the color of the label. I'm going to give it some strange green color. Uh, the color of the icon, I'm going to give that blue, which, because the icon is yellow, comes out strangely. You can even select the icon itself. And I will give it a P icon for Pamela. Um, I'm going to pick on her just because, you know, she's there. Um, you can change the viewpoint. This is um, where, the, uh, where, when you double click on the place mark, it jumps to. And I'm going to click on center in view to pull it there. Snapshot the current view as the uh, look at. I'm going to do that. Um, you can select the altitude uh, and the altitude mode. So I'm going to draw that up. And I'm going to extend it to the ground, which you see puts that nice, cool line down to the end. And click OK. Now you have a place mark, and it's sitting in your My Places in Google Earth. Now, the trick is, the thing that most people don't realize, and I'm going to open up now what I should have had open at the beginning, which is Notepad. So you can use any text editor. You can do copy, paste, and, <laughs> and there you have your KML file. So this is a, this is a really neat trick. Most, uh, many people don't actually know that you can do that. And what people also don't realize is you can do it the other way. So I can now, for instance, um, I'm going to change. Uh, um, I'll, I'll go through a little bit more of the details of what's actually in here. But I'm going to go ahead and change the name of the file. So Pamela's summer house. And I am going to change the P to an F, because I happen to know that's a different, uh, different icon for Pamela Fox. I'm going to do that 
here as well. Can you, like, give, give them my number while you're <laughs> <laughs> Sure, you want to speak it out loud for people who, who can't read online. Um, and I think I'm doing this in all the right places, but the, the font is so large, it's hard to tell. Um, and then I'm going to change this to a cool place mark. And then I'm going to copy. So here's one of the limitations. This place mark is still here. I copied it out, but it's still there. Uh, just some, something you're going to know about. I'm going to talk actually in this about how, you know, both the strengths of uh, Google Earth as, a, as an <coughs> editor and the weaknesses. So, um, Pamela, are you watching the time at all? If I go over too long, just, okay. just uh, tell me. So I'm going to delete the old one out, press paste, control V on Windows boxes, and look, I have a cool place mark. And it's got the right um, icon and everything. So I think that's a pretty cool um, aspect of Google Earth. Now, you can do this with a variety of things. Um, you can create, for instance, uh, you can add a polygon. Which you can give a style to the, a color to the line and a color to the area. You can again change the viewpoint, I'm not going to bother with that right now, and change the altitude and even if you want, extend it to the ground. Um, and you can change things like the width of the line around it. So I don't know if you can see that on the video, but the line is thickening considerably. And you can change the opacity. I'm going to change the opacity of the, um, of the polygon inside. You can even give it a random color if you want. Click OK. Do the copy and paste, and you'll see Again, we have a polygon, an untitled polygon. And again, I could do the, the same way. I could copy and paste it back into uh, Google Earth. Similarly, you can do a line string, and you can add an image overlay. Um, let me uh, show you, because the interface is a little different for the image overlay, I'm going to show you that um, as one way to do, uh, to do this. So you add the image overlay. You browse to a. Uh, that is the, the right, OK. And there you go. You have a, uh, an image overlaid on the Earth. Well, but that may not be the exact location that you want it, right? So you can click on this, uh, the middle cross, and change the, uh, the location. I'm going to try and get it to roughly actually match the United States. Um, as you'll see, that image is actually of points in the United States. You can change the sides and the size there. And you can use this here. Let me get a little closer to that. See there's this little diamond right here? You can use that to change the rotation. Again, you can change the view, altitude. So, so you wanted to raise that up a little bit. Um, I find that less interesting. Uh, you can change the refresh times. So with images, particularly images that are sitting on a web server, you can have them refresh periodically. So say you have an image that changes once a day um, or once every few minutes. So a lot of people use this, for instance, for, a, um, for webcams. So you want to have a webcam. You have a webcam that for some reason is actually pointing at the ground. It's particularly useful. Um, and that would be somebody joining us. So um, we have a video conference system, and somebody is just joining it there. You can't actually see them because we've turned that off, but uh, that's what that noise was. Um, and you can change the bounding box there. OK, so I'm sorry. That what I was saying is the, uh, if you have a, uh, a webcam that is an image that refreshes every you know, 10 seconds, every minute, you can set the refresh time so that it would refresh that. You can also change the view base refresh, um, which is a topic props for another, for another session. Uh, if you let them uh, join, but have it be in the background. Thanks. OK, click OK. And again, 
just so you can see this, I'm going to delete that base here. This is actually a much simpler KML for, uh, for overlays. So you see here is the, uh, here's the image, the scale, uh, the, and the, the uh, bounding box for it. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Yes. How are you getting to the um, the notepad where you are showing the, the code? Oh, the source I'm code? sorry. Uh, so here, uh, just to reiterate that, I copy. Okay. And then here, I um, I was just using keyboard shortcuts to paste. Okay. Yeah. So Did that's Control V. So you. Show you them in like crimson edit. Use any program. Yeah, you can use any uh, any text editor. Um, crimson edit. Okay. Is this your favorite text editor? Yeah, it has uh, syntax highlighting. Oh, sweet. So does Notepad++. That's what I tend to use. Well, so, so there you go. Um, okay. So that uh, those are um, the basics of doing the basic geometries. For uh, for Google Earth, yes. Can you use a GIF or a ping instead of transparent color? Yes, you can use. Um, there's a there's a long oh. list of uh, image formats that we support. But GIF, you could make PNG. Light transparent and then make it look like there's a bunch of dots on. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Um, and if you're using Google Earth Pro, you can use something like a, a GeoTIFF file, as well, which would have embedded in it the uh, the geo the coordinates. But if you want it to be compatible with Google Maps, uh, you should use GIF, ping, or JPEG, and also don't use the rotation um, right. style, the, the rotation property, because um, we find it difficult to rotate images in the browser, so we don't do it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> yes. Kind of fun. Um, Working on XML is so much more difficult than working on the map. When would I want to move it to XML and play with it there? Because it seems to me like when you're on the map, it's so much easier to, to actually. That's a really good question. Um, let me uh, let me show one other thing that you can add, and then I'm going to actually get to some of the weaknesses of this approach. Um, so, one other thing that you can add is uh, uh, actually a few other things. You can create folders, which will allow you to organize your content. So. I create a folder, untitled folder, and then I can grab Pamela's summer house into it. Come on. An untitled image overlay. There we go. Um, you can also add, um, because a line string, you can uh, do a 3D model. Um, you can add a photo, which allows you to do the photo overlays, which um, I'll show you a little <coughs> bit of in, in a minute what those look like. And then uh, you can also do a network <coughs> link. So let me do a, a photo adding and a photo overlay. I'm going to use the same image so you can see the quite major differences here. Um, again, you have view. You can ha um, have a lot of information here that you can edit about the photo. And you click OK. And you'll see the photo overlay. Let's actually get a little closer to that. <laughs> Did you put in Mano's mom? <laughs> that is so funny. OK. <laughs> um, the photo overlay is, um, is something that hangs out basically as a billboard. This is, uh, not this is kind of useful for um, low res imagery. It's really useful for very high resolution imagery, and we're actually going to have a presentation devoted to photo overlays uh, later in the series. So I won't get into that too much, but play around with that feature. Um, so this uh, basically enters a different view. You can sort of navigate within this photo. Um, and there's a layer, the Gigapan layer, in uh, default layer in Google Earth that you can play around with them a little bit more. OK, exit that photo. Um, OK, so why would somebody not want to use this? Um, this is a really good, uh, a good um, tool for creating a basic geometry. It's a good tool for creating a template of geometries. But say I created a bunch of place marks. 
and then copied and pasted them into the text editor. What you would see is that for each place mark that I created, it creates all the styles. And if I create one document that's got all the place marks in it, it's going to have a whole bunch of style uh, styles in there. So what that, uh, you know, say you create a folder, you copy and paste that out, you're going to have a pretty complicated and um, much larger file size, basically. And it's going to be not that pretty. Basically, anybody who looks at the XML will know, oh, I know, they just created that in Google Earth. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't show off your excellent expertise. Um, there's other features that you can't use uh, that you have to do in XML. For instance, uh, time-based animation. You can't uh, do that using uh, Google Earth or any of the other tools. There's no way to create that uh, by def you know, within these uh, GUI editors. Uh, so you'd have to add the timestamps and time spans yourself. Um, also, we have a new uh, balloon templating uh, through uh, extended data, which works in Google Earth, but not in Maps. Um, that's a really powerful tool, and again, not something you can create using, uh, using Google Earth. So that's sort of the downside. I think um, what I find it most useful for is creating a set of styles. Oh, I really like the color to look just like this. I like this sort of, also creating the exact placement. If I want to mark something, I go in, I put the place mark down in Google Earth, I copy it out, and then I can grab the coordinates and I know what I'm, I'm working with. Um, but if I want to create a large number of files or if I want to do something dynamic, I'm working directly with the XML or writing a script that does it for me. Okay. Any other questions? I think that's right around the time we allocated to that, right? Okay. Cool. All right. Pamela, it is now up to you. Now the awkward pinning on of the mic. It's okay. I wore a collar. Hello. Is good? Yeah? All right, sweet. So that was Google Earth, um, which is obviously 3D. Uh, now we're going to move on to the 2D equivalent. So we'll start off. Uh, how many people have used Google Maps? Yay. So I actually, so my brother's birthday was uh, on Valentine's Day, and I called him up and he's like, Pammy, what are you doing? What are you up to? I was like, well, I work for Google now. He's like, yeah, what are you doing? I'm like, have you heard of Google Maps? No, no. I was like, have you used MapQuest? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so you guys are all ahead of my brother. Uh, try not to hate your family too much. So, uh, so now we're going to go, for those of you who have your laptops open, let's go to maps.google.com. Okay, and also another question, how many people have used the second tab in, my map, uh, in Google Maps? Sweet. So how, somebody tell me what that tab is for. It's freaking awesome. That's what it's for. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you could have made that up. No, I mean it's all, it's like I mapped out like where Google was and, and made a little thing for where I wanted to go and look around and stuff. I mean you can't mess with that. Did the same thing when I went to Europe and went to Paris and I was like a oh, hotel's here and a hotel's here right. and and you know it's this far away from the Eiffel Tower and it was it was awesome. So exactly. So it's for so one of the things you can do in that tab is create new maps, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And the other thing you can do actually is you can load in Maplets. And Maplets are actually like Google gadgets, but they work inside Google Maps and they operate on the main map. So it's a good way of like, so let's say you're planning your trip to Paris, right? So at the same time, you could actually load in a Maplet to show like uh, panoramic photos around Paris or the hotels around Paris, right? Uh, so it's a good way of overlaying a bunch of data at the same time. Um, so there's two aspects to it, the creating maps and the you know, loading in Maplets or loading in other people's maps, right? Um, so this is what we call my maps. So you talked about doing one for Paris. I'm planning my spring break to Costa Rica right now. Um, so I've got I've got various things on here. Um, I think this place has good lobster, so I'm willing to go to Costa Rica for good lobster. Um, so that's a map I've already created. Uh, but let's start by creating a new map. So a lot of this is going to seem kind of similar to what we just saw on Google Earth, and this is just our Google Maps equivalent, but there are a few th features that are different, particularly since this is a web app as opposed to like a desktop app. So when we do create new map, um, 
We have a couple options here that uh, weren't here when it launched, so I don't know if everyone's seen it, but we have the ability to collaborate and the ability to import, right? So the first thing we're going to use is the ability to import. So this lets us pick a KML file from on the web or from on our, our computer and have it loaded in and be a map that we can edit. So Mono, did you save out your KML file? Oh, I didn't. Well, we're just going to have to do that. So save as. Yes. So I'm going to right click on the folder he created and uh, save this. <coughs> I'll just do a KML file for fun. So Mono's cool KML. We'll save that to the drive. Um, so then I'm going to click on import. And discover it. Do, do, do. Mono, mono, mono. Where'd you go? Maybe it's in uh, my documents. Yeah, you're right. All right, so we'll go there instead. My documents is kind of long. <laughs> I need to learn how to use folders. When is Windows going to have tagging? God. OK. So we're going to say upload from file. Sweet. So this is apparently where my home is. You put my <laughs> summer home in Wyoming? <laughs> or is that Colorado? Colorado? Colorado. That's not bad. OK, that's that's, you know, that's OK. Next time, let's think uh, right around here. OK, okay good. All right, so cool. So now I've loaded in his map. Um, and you can see how some of the 3D features uh, you obviously don't see here, right? Because uh, we don't have altitude. So this polygon is flat on the map. The marker is flat on the map. But it still translates pretty well. Um, so we'll give a title. Pamela's way cooler map than Mono's. I'm not sure that's good English. Uh, description, this is cooler. All right. Um, so now we can start editing it. So we have a couple tools up here, right? And uh, we have the ability to create markers, make lines, and draw polys. The other thing we have an ability to do, which is our other option here, is to collaborate. Okay? So this is really cool because then it's like, you know, I'm planning my, my spring break to Costa Rica. I'm obviously not going by myself because that would be really sad. So I've shared the map with my friends so that they can add their ideas to it as well because in case not everybody likes lobster. We may not get to go. So I'm going to collaborate and uh, invite Mono. So Mono, is, uh, he's got his laptop set up over there. Hi. OK. And I'll let him invite others just in case. And if you want to, you can actually make it global collaboration. So if you want the entire world to edit your map, you can say, allow anyone to edit this map. So you're giving a whole lot of control to the whole world. And let me warn you that. There's a lot of crazy people in the world, but you're welcome to do it, and you probably come up with some pretty interesting results. So we'll send the invitation. Hopefully, Mono will get it soon, but we'll start playing with the tools here. So add a place mark. It's going to look very similar. Uh, this time, we're going to give Mono a summer home. So we're going to go ahead, <laughs> South Dakota. I was actually born in South Dakota. OK, you know what? All right. <laughs> Sas Saskatchewan. Sounds <laughs> good. Saskatchewan. I hope no Saskatchewanis are watching this. Um, so this is going to be Mono's summer house. It's really boring here. No people. <laughs> don't come. I bet you they don't even have Wi-Fi there. Um, we can do a couple things there. It actually let us put in like HTML. Um, so we can do rich text uh, and then edit the HTML. I wonder if it lets us add a blink tag. That'd be kind of cool. <coughs> Blink is my favorite HTML tag ever. I try and put it in every mashup. So let's say, OK. Oh, and we can customize the icon. So click on the icon. We see many of the similar options that we saw on Google Earth. And so we'll do a <laughs> volcano, just in case there's a volcano there. <laughs> so let's press OK. And when we click on it, oh, I really want to see what it looks like. OK, well, once we're not in edit mode, we'll see if that Blink tag actually worked. So that was creating a place mark. Um, and then we've got, now I really, really, really like the line refinement tools in my maps. Um, if you guys have ever used any programs that like let you draw lines and edit lines, it's, it's kind of tricky, right? You know, Adobe Illustrator has one way of doing it. Um, everything has its own way of doing it. I really like what they've done in my maps. And it's not just because I work for Google. Um, so the first thing I can do is just kind of you know, draw this line around here. So this is, we're going to outline the area that has no people in it. So that Mono knows how lonely he's going to be. Um, and so then we'll end the line. 
But um, I kind of want to be a little more detailed about it. So Mono's Ring of Loneliness. <laughs> That's a good name. OK. Um, now, I, you know, this is incorrect because there were people in the lake. So what we can do is just drag in the middle of the line, and it'll automatically create a midpoint for us. So this is really cool. Every time you drag, like, you mouse over a segment, it'll actually show you the possible midpoint markers. So then I can be like, oh, OK, cool. So I actually do want to split the line there. So it makes it really easy to refine and really kind of addictive. Because sometimes I start off, I'm like, OK, I'm just going to make some really simple borders of places. Like, uh, I did a borders of the US states map. And uh, <coughs> looks like Mono's adding stuff to my map now. We'll see what kind of vandalism that results in. Um, so I was doing like a borders of the US states map, right? And I wanted to do it really simple, because I wanted to not have that many uh, vertices, because I wanted to load it onto a map later and not you know, hang down the browser. Um, but I just I kept on refining it because it was so much fun, and I just had to like stop myself and be like, no, no more refining. But it's really fun. Just trust. Just start doing it. You'll just you're just gonna drag midpoints forever. <laughs> um, so that was um, that was a line, and we can also I guess we should have done a, 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 a natural polygon here so we could fill it. So we'll just make this the actual circle of loneliness. Circle. Okay. All right, so now we have polylines, polys. Let's see what Mono's done over here. <laughs> so apparently I now have a winter <laughs> home uh, near Hudson Bay. It's OK. I like living on the bay. I assume there's a lot of lobster there, right? Is it too cold for lobster? Probably. Oh, man. All right, well, Let's you know what? Oh, 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 guess what? Guess what? I get to drag this. Oh, oh, snap. Look whose <laughs> home is now in Panama. All right. This is awesome. Uh, so that is collaborative mapping, which is pretty cool. Um, and this has been used, they've used it during like the fires in San Diego um, to quickly document like everything that was going on there. Uh, I think they recently had snowstorms in China and they also used the my maps there um, to be able to keep track of you know, all the catastrophes that are happening. So my maps has been <laughs> very successful due to many natural disasters in the world. And we'd like to thank Mother Nature for giving us the, uh, the extra PR. Um, so here we have, we've got the collaborate, we've got the import, and we've created all the tools. Um, you'll notice that we don't have quite all the stuff that they have in <coughs> Google Earth. Um, so we don't have image overlay here yet. Uh, we don't have photo overlay because that's not even supported in Google Maps. Uh, we don't have folders here. And uh, is there anything else we're missing? We're missing general 3D information as well. You don't have the ability to create PowerPoints. Right. Right. So this is actually uh, more basic than Google Earth, but it does have the advantage of being collaborative. Can so you import, import one that has network links? Yes. Yes. And then it, and it will still will it keep on updating? Yes. yes. Nice. That's cool. That is cool. And you can use both. You can also use view based refresh in uh, in maps as well. Yes. Um, so here we've created a map. And uh, we can actually, we should be able to view this in Google Earth. Um, here we go, edit. So when you actually go to edit, um, it'll give you a view in Google Earth. And this is actually just a, a KML containing a network link to this. So <coughs> let's click on this and just verify that it also works back in Earth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's trying to load the image overlay that's on my hard drive. All right, cool. So now we have uh, now we have our stuff back in Earth. So that's pretty nifty. Um, all right, so now we've got one more tool that we want to show, and this is the spreadsheets mapper that uh, got blogged about recently. And this is using Google spreadsheets <coughs> in order to create KML. And this is something that Christian mentioned that he worked on, and possibly the person who kept trying to VC in. Um, hopefully, that's the guy who created it as well. So, there. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, how's it going? Good. Good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to right, so <laughs> listen to my echo. Sean, you mute your mic. Yes, I can. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's uh, he's clearly be seen in from very far away. Um, so if you just search for spreadsheets mapper, you'll find uh, 
you'll find this tutorial that the Google Earth Outreach team put together. And um, this is just taking advantage of a lot of features of spreadsheets in order to make it really easy to create KML. So we talked about like Google Earth is kind of, you know, you're just manually creating these place marks. Google Maps is the same thing. Spreadsheets, that's a, you know, a little bit more level of control. <coughs> Um, because think about you can you can write things to make it easier to import stuff into spreadsheets. So I would actually think of this as maybe a step up from the other two options in terms of uh, sophistication. So the first thing we have to do is open up this starter spreadsheet, which is a, a template that they've put together. All right, cool. So we've opened up the spreadsheet. Um, and the first worksheet in here, they've nicely made into pretty instructions. And we just have to fill out a few things here. So we'll just say Google Geo Developers for our organization name. Website URL, we'll plug the uh, documentation for KML. Uh, name, I'm actually going to import some Seattle restaurants that I like. So we'll call this Seattle Restaurants. Description, yummy places to eat and drink. And it says compatible with maps and old versions of Earth. I'd recommend that. And uh, so now we have to, in order to actually get this to work, we're going to have to publish the spreadsheet um, because your spreadsheet has to be viewable on the web for, for anyone to see it. So uh, by default, you know, it's private so that nobody looks at your data. So you just go to the Publish tab and say Publish Now. And now we just have to copy and paste this link into here. So we can actually start off, as soon as we've done that, we can actually just view the sample data and see what it looks like with all the sample stuff they put in here. And uh, we'll, view, we'll view it in Google Maps. Mm -mm -mm. And I'll show you the, the sample data that's going to be using here. So our second tab, this is what we're going to be um, putting our data into. This is the Placemark Data tab. And uh, you can see all the sample data here. Uh, Placemark names, folder names, latitude, longitude, that's key, as well as a bunch of uh, additional information that we put into the info window. So here, this is a sample. Um, and the sample is useful because you can see they've already done some preset templates um, that they think look good, and I agree. Uh, so you can click on them and say, OK, that looks cool, that looks cool. And you can actually see like samples they've done where they've actually filled in the data. Our, resolu our resolution here is uh, really giant. <laughs> so you can see they're kind of big. Um, so in our case, I don't actually have a photo or too much information. So I'm going to stick with one of the more simpler, more simpler, one of the simpler templates. And that's going to be template number six. Since that one doesn't have a picture, it's pretty basic, OK? So when we want to do that, we decide what template we want, OK? So we go back here, and there's a little column here. It's red. We can just type in, we want template number six. And that, what that actually will do, we'll update all these column headers to be what you need to put in here, uh, as those vary by template. All right, so now let's open up my spreadsheet that already has some data in it. Um, so some of you might have Excel spreadsheets. Some of you might have databases to, to output this. Um, whatever form you have it in, it's pretty easy to copy and paste, you know, as long as it's tabbed or in a spreadsheet. So we'll start with our latitude and longitude. Um, so this is ten, no, nine different Seattle restaurants. So if you guys go to Seattle, you can take my recommendations because they're all really delicious. We'll paste it in there. It'll update. All right, so we're going to delete these ones at the bottom as uh, we don't have that much information. And so I'm basically just going to go back and forth um, and paste. I don't know if you'd recommend a more efficient way of doing that. So you deleted the rows there, which is uh, it's much better for the spreadsheet to only delete the white parts. Oh, OK, the right. The entire row, it's getting rid of some of the code in the right, right, right. columns. OK. But yeah, copying and pasting like that is fine. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it the way that they like it. I only used this like two hours ago, but then you can see how easy it is to use because, you know, clearly it's not hard to pick up. All right, so instead of, uh, we'll just go and 
grab the ones. Oh, I think we have to repaste our uh, latitude longitude data. And the great thing about spreadsheets um, is just like the map that we just had open, spreadsheets are also collaborative. Um, so you can share your spreadsheet with whoever you want to be able to edit it. Um, so this is collaboration with a little bit more of sophistication. Because think about it, in spreadsheets you can also do formulas, you can do concatenation, stuff like that. All right, so let's go put some titles in here. Do -do -do. We'll make it the placemark names for the titles. Um, I don't want to have any folders since mine is kind of simple, so I'm actually just going to clear out all the folders since that's optional. Um, and then I'm going to go, and this is my little HTML that I want to have in the window. Uh, and I'm just going to put it as the paragraph header over here. <coughs> All right. And then since I don't have any more information, I'm actually just going to clear out uh, most of this stuff here. Now, what you really should do is probably edit the templates, and you can do that. They're actually they're in the other tabs. Um, so you pick the one, probably the template that you like the most, edit it to have the, you know, the column headers that you're going to be using, and then use that template instead. However, since I'm lazy, I'm just going to use theirs and do it kind of ghetto style. And let's just do the title and over there. All right. So if all goes well, yeah. So you've changed that, that box up there, it only changes the headers. It doesn't set the template to use for each place mark. You need to change all of the numbers in that column to be the templates that you want to use for each place mark. Ah. Ah. Right? I see. All right. That one little box up above the uh, scroller there is only for your guide to, to change what you see. So you can use multiple templates in the same KML file. Mm, good. Very nice. Learn something new every minute. All right, so I'm just going to paste six into a bunch of these cells. Doo -doo. Updating, updating. All right, cool. Uh, the other thing to do, actually, is when we did publish, it defaults to <coughs> only publishing at the time that you clicked publish. Um, so this trick is there's two things here. You can manually republish a document, and that might be good if you're working on a document where you think you might make some mistakes and you just want to um, make all your changes, look at it, and think, okay, this is good to go, and republish. However, if you're incredibly confident in yourself and in all your changes, you can click this little button here, which is automatically republishes when changes are made. So I'm incredibly confident, so I'm going to do that. And just to be sure, I'm going to republish a document right now. But from now on, I should never have to republish this document. Um, so now I'm going to refresh this and see how I did. Yay. Um, so now these are, this is all my locations. Um, it's got the titles here. And uh, it's, it's pretty basic looking, but it's pretty cool how fast it is to use. And if you think about it, um, you could pretty easily create one that had thousands of place marks in it as well. So anything else you want to mention? That's great. Cool. All right, so that's three different ways of creating KML. Yeah? Of place marks is not accurate, up to 400 in this spreadsheet. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Will that change when we up the limits for spreadsheets one day in the uh, ever future? Possibly. We're, it's a limit in the number of formulas you can have in spreadsheet right now. Right. Uh, and there are a lot of them in there because it's doing a lot of errors. Yeah. Right. right, yeah. So there's other, there's other things to say here. So there's, you can actually, if you want to be really hardcore, you could browse to the actual KML tab. And they've done a very good thing and hidden all of the columns that do all of the magic. But if you're a hacker, like me, you can unhide the columns and all the rows and then actually see what it's doing. And uh, this is actually the KML output here. So then you could you know, double click on these, <laughs> look at all the formulas, see how much work they went into this, and be really impressed and go, yay, good work. All right, so we've seen three different ways of creating KML. Um, so one thing I want to talk about is very easy ways to consume KML once you've created it, and this would uh, be via the Maps API. So once you've created some KMLs, 
and you say you just want to do a, b a basic map that shows them all uh, on that map. Uh, we did add a class to the Maps API that makes it very easy to display KML files. Um, and I'll just show you an example of that. That class is called GGOXML. And I think we've got a tab open for that. Here you go. Um, So here's a class. It's really simple. All you have to do is send in the URL of the KML. Uh, it also takes in GRSS. And then there's some other things you can do as well. Um, but just that one line of code will give you a KML file on your map. So let's look at the example. Let's go die die. Google Wi-Fi. Don't connect to Google Wi-Fi. <coughs> we'll change networks. Any questions while we're waiting? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Um, I put everything in Project Hosting. Here we go. All right, it's fine. I can show the documentation. All right, so we're just going to go to the documentation example here. It's very simple. OK, so this is just uh, KML on the map. This is not one that was created in my maps, but it could be just as well. And this, so we have GGOXML. We pass in the URL, and then we just add it as an overlay to the map. Pretty simple. We can also toggle it on and off if we want to. And that's still not working. So yeah, cool. So that's a really simple way to consume your KML after you've created it. And there's one other thing we want to talk about. So um, the cool thing about Google is that search, right? We're really good at it. Um, so the other thing we're trying to get good at is geo search. Um, and this is crawling and indexing the geo web. Uh, I don't know if any of you have heard the various talks about it, but it's pretty cool stuff. Um, if you guys actually go to Google Maps, uh, you can actually find the results of, um, of the, the, the stuff that we've crawled on the web. So let's say, uh, and actually you can just specify it exactly. So on Google Maps, you can search and you'll get a mix of results, right? We have various things on Google Maps. We have uh, geocodes where we take an address and we tell you what point it's at. Then we have like, you search for pizza and we give you a bunch of pizza stuff and that's from our local business results. But then we just have all this user index content, right? And so this is KML that we found on sites all over the web that people have made on my maps um, that they've somehow made available for Google to index. So it's basically three types of results. And now we've actually added a search dropdown to make this really specific. So you can get to that by doing show search options. So everything, locations, businesses, user created content. So we're going to explicitly say that. By default, you actually get a mixed result. Um, and then we're going to search for uh, Sleep is in Seattle. And it's good. We get tons of uh, results. Now, you wouldn't usually get results for this if you're just searching for businesses or for geocodes because Sleep is in Seattle was just a movie that was about a relationship in Seattle. But luckily, we have tons of people that have decided to create KMLs. Um, <coughs> and for an example, for this one, this documents the houseboat where Tom Hanks' character lived, in case you really want to go see where he lived and relive his amazing life. Um, and there's actually tons of results, because um, apparently a lot of people really like that movie. I rewatched it, and it's actually really, it's not that good. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was disappointed, because I had fond memories, and I was wrong. Uh, so anyway, so the cool thing is like about this is that you can make your content available <coughs> for Google to index. Um, and you, By the way, you yeah. Can do similar searches. Oh, yeah, right, of course. Google Earth. So let's try this. Find Businesses tab? Yeah, OK. Um, so we go to this tab, which is, I guess, the general search tab. And uh, by default, we're going to get the business results here. And those are indicated by the red icons with the, the characters on them. But then we see this, user created content. And that's our clue to knowing that this is from KML and GRSS that we've indexed on the web. Um, so actually, that's, that's similar stuff there. Maybe that's a houseboat again. People are very into this houseboat. Um, so there you go. So the question you might have is, how do I get my stuff to be indexed by Google? 
Um, so the key is, well, if you create a my map and you just say, you know, make it public, then Google will automatically index it because you created it on our server so we know about it, right? However, you might have created it in Google Earth and put it on another server. You may have created it in spreadsheets, right? So yeah. in that case, what you want to do is actually create um, something called a sitemap. And how many people have heard of sitemaps? OK, cool. So sitemaps are just, uh, it's an XML file that you host on your web server that tells Google, these are the files here. Please index them, et cetera. So now you can tell Google, hey, I've got KML files here. Please index them. Um, so luckily, we've got a nice article that Josie wrote. And uh, it tells us how to put together a, uh, a, a sitemap with KML in it. Um, it's just under right here, submit your content to Google. And it will just go through um, some of the basics. Uh, the important thing is that we did, uh, we do have a way to let you specify your author and your website. Because a lot of people are worried, like, OK, so I'm letting Google index my content. What am I getting out of it? So what you're getting out of it is that somebody sees your content, and then they see your website, and they're like, cool, I want to go to the website and see what else they have, right? Because most likely, your website is you know, completely dedicated to Sleepless in Seattle, and is like a very immersive experience with Tom Hanks like, popping all over in a flash. And that's something that I want to go to, right? I don't want to keep looking at these you know, pathetic little place marks in Google Maps. So that's the advantage is that you can, you know, for Google Maps mashups, they can have great sites and then drive people to those sites via community search results. Um, so we, there are ways to do attribution both in KML um, through the, actually through the Atom protocol, uh, using the author and name and link tags. And then also for GRSS, you can do it as well, just using their author name. And then the other key, put your KML on your server and, or any server, and then you just add it to your sitemap, just like you'd add any other URL. So it's pretty cool. Um, Imagine you know you making a little file and then seeing it show up on Google Maps later. I mean, you think about it. You could make some kind of a try and do like a present for your loved one or whatever, and do some file that contains some obscure keyword in it, and then they could search for it on their birthday and see it. Something like that. I don't know. You should definitely hack Google Maps, though. I highly recommend it. So yeah, cool. Uh, I think I've covered everything, right? Yeah. Have you guys, I don't know if you have that capability of actually adding HTML content on a marker. As in, I know you saw just basic, but what if you wanted to add something like a form, like a basic form? Right. Um, so the problems with forms is that sometimes they involve JavaScript, mm -hmm. and they often involve some kind of submitting. Uh, so in Google Maps, you're not going to have too much success with that. So uh, do you want to talk about it from just basic KML point of view? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, That's a tricky question. So in um, Google Earth, actually, if you can pull up the, uh, the reference, the camel reference. Ah, uh, yeah. We, uh, in Google Earth at this point, we support a subset of um, HTML and balloons, which does not include JavaScript or forms. Um, and if you go to the reference and look under description, there's a lengthy description um, balloon example, and it shows every element that we, uh, that we claim to support in, um, in the description balloon. Uh, one thing you can do, uh, though, on Windows machines, this currently is not uh, available on uh, Mac or Linux, is you can embed uh, Flash uh, content. And that in, um, in Google Earth, that can be any Flash com It could be any Flash application. Where's that link? So videos are the traditional ones, but you could do something more interactive that way. And uh, I, later, I can tell you some good examples of people who have done that. Um, so if you, uh, if you go to click on go to description. And scroll down, there's a. <coughs> so um, I, as I understand it, most, uh, most HTML will work on maps, but not you can't have JavaScript. Right, we strip out all the JavaScript due to the security concerns right. um, with people trying to like grab and the, the Google flash cookies. And the is actually more lim limited, is that right, to videos? Yeah, I believe we actually only allow YouTube only Flash. YouTube flash. Okay. So th yeah, the dilemma right now is that it, it kind of varies across Google Earth and Google Maps right now. Um, but forms are a definite no right now. A lot of that has to do with different security needs of different applications. Right. 
However, um, you can do an iframe, I believe, in maps and in, can you do an earth? No. Okay. <laughs> right. But, you know, you can make some really pretty headers and links and ordered lists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one thing you can do, actually, and it could be a good idea, is create different versions of your KML for maps and earth. Yes. Um, so one of them might take advantage of the features in uh, Google Earth, like if you have panoramic photos that you want people to browse around, you could do one in Google Earth that uses photo overlays. And then in Google Maps, you can do an iframe that opens up like a QuickTime VR viewer. And I actually specifically know um, a company that did that. Um, so that takes full advantage of what both of them are capable of. So. And you could use a network link that, um, that would detect what kind of um, what kind of client you are using? So whether you're using Map or Maps or which version of the other client, and then could the server pass that information to the server? The server could use that to detect um, to, to, to right serve the right kind of yeah. content. Yeah. Can yes, you explain to everyone what a, what a network link is? Ah, okay. <laughs> so um, I think I glossed over this a little bit, but a network link is basically a short file that says go grab KML from over here. So um, it's, it's a way of creating, uh, you know, you create one file, somebody can download it, and then they can get your most recent content at any point. So um, it has additional capabilities. Like I said, you can, it can do things like detect what kind of client is being used. Um, you can uh, do a view-based refresh, which would be basically, um, what am I looking at? You know, sends the bounding box back to the server. The server then decides to send the appropriate content. There's a lot of other variables that you can embed with them as well. Did you want an example of a uh, really nice use of the spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. you want me to sure. Talk to you sure. Yeah, now we're just going to show examples until uh, you guys get bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I believe a lunar eclipse just occurred. Yes, in fact, it was, it was on the way when we were Oh, is, is that what was going on on the way over yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. It wasn't a class. It's, it's huge. It's, yeah. it was, it was it's big. supposed to be uh, <laughs> going <laughs> on 750. Real time? 7.50, so if anybody wants to run out and look. There'll be another one of those in three years or something. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, while he's setting this up, if anybody wants to grab some food, please do. Sandwiches, brownies. Nothing like funny in the brownies. <laughs> 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 While I'm waiting for this to load, a couple other things about the spreadsheet, um, since I'll plug my own work, um, <laughs> is, uh, and Sean's work as well. Thank you, Sean. Um, the, um, the, there's a network link that you can get off the spreadsheet uh, so that you can hand that network link out, that little KML file, and then it will always point people back to your latest uh, updates on the spreadsheet. Um, let's see, what am I looking for here? This one. So this group, Edge of Existence, uh, created a really nice um, KML file using our spreadsheet. And you can see some of their points come up here. They added custom icons. Um, they made it so that the uh, the label only shows up when you mouse over it. And then they created this really nice HTML um, balloon. Let's see, there's one that's got a picture in it. And this was all done through the spreadsheet mapper. With a little bit of HTML and uh, putting the content in each of the rows for uh, several hundred place marks. links to their website, links to more information. Um, so lots of cool stuff you can do. Any more questions on that? So, uh, I'll show you what their spreadsheet actually looks like. This will load for me. I'll also plug the Google Earth Outreach website, which has a number of tutorials on uh, various more advanced aspects of creating KML. Do you want to say a little bit about Google Earth Outreach? Sure. Um, Google Earth Outreach is a small group uh, within the Google Earth and Geo team. And their mission is to help 
uh, nonprofits and NGOs and public benefit organizations to use uh, Google Earth and Google Maps better <coughs> to advance their, uh, their work. Um, we have uh, some tutorials, a showcase of all sorts of really cool layers, and then these case studies which uh, walk you through how a number of uh, high profile organizations have created uh, really cool KMLs. Um, so here you see, this is just a screenshot, but this is uh, exactly the spreadsheet that they used to create those, uh, those KML files. Any more questions? So does the spreadsheet have to be really complicated like that? Why can't it just be, you know, some x, y coordinates, you know, the data, and okay, put this in the balloon? It can. Uh, our first version was sort of like that. Um, but we wanted to give people the ability to use the different balloon templates. Um, so you can create a very simple template uh, in there if you want to, but uh, the purpose of this was to give people the ability to create um, <coughs> fancy balloons like this. So um, it allows you to choose uh, to set up to six different templates within one file so different place marks can have different looks to them. Now is um, that one using, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of you know points on the screen, but is that using the network link where it sends the bounds and it only gets like it only is displaying the points that are I that are within the bounds of what you're looking I at. I believe this one loads the whole thing at once. It's this one's only got probably about a hundred or so <coughs> points on it, so it's not that big. I, I don't believe the um, spreadsheet template does view based refresh. No, it um, doesn't. You could you could export your KML from the spreadsheet and modify it manually to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think also what you're asking is uh, regionation, where um, if you have a lot of data, you can set up a KML file to show you sort of a zoomed out, low resolution view when you're way out. And then as you zoom into a specific area, it'll load a different version, which is higher resolution of just that area. So you don't have to load the high resolution of the entire exactly. file. Um, that is not built in. We do, I believe we have a tutorial on that. Uh, let me check. So that's when you want to start going to probably some server side. Here you go. Avoiding overload with regions is a tutorial that will tell you more about how to use regionation. Yeah. And there's a lot more in the documentation. I would say if you have more than 200 place marks, you should probably look into uh, a more sophisticated system than like, what we've shown here today. I mean, if you have 200 place marks that are just a point and maybe a title, that shouldn't be a problem. But if you have a, a large <coughs> amount of uh, HTML in each one, then your file size starts to balloon right. pretty quickly. Yeah, there's like some, like when you have a KML or KMZ <coughs> file, there's some limit to the size that it can be. You know how you go to Google Maps and you can just point it to, you know, some KMZ file? Like you point it to that file and there's some file size limit that I, I've never Google found Maps. where it was at. But sometimes I'll make ones that are so big and it'll just say, that's too big, right. you know, go yeah. away. That's it why should we say, that's too big, it could only be two megs, and <laughs> instead of, that's too big. I think that we've documented that somewhere, but we actually do change that limit from time to time, so that's uh -huh. why we didn't. But, um, I mean, at that point, we recommend you using network links, so that we don't, I mean, just think about the poor browser, right? Right. Do you really want to force a user to go download your, you know, billion megabyte file? Right. Well... We're kind of forcing you into a good practice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. So we're, I mean, we're going to have a, a you're going to talk about the view based uh, right. fresh network links. So if that's something, if you guys are people that have, you know, huge amounts of data, um, and you're interested in more sophisticated stuff, then you should just stay tuned for our upcoming talks. Yep. This is really like, I recommend this is like, you know, something you do with your family members, um, provided they know what Google Maps is. Or, you know, your friends when you're planning your trips and stuff like that. It's, very it's also a good way to get um, your clients involved. Like if you're working with a, a client to say, here's how you can create this content for me. And then you can take the content and use it as a good shot as well. It's also a good way to do, like, you know, to start, start figuring out what your template's going to look like. Well, that spread, like, that spreadsheet is really neat. Like, that's really cool. Why isn't that one in the blog? I didn't see anything about that it in the blog. It was blogged about last week, I think. Yes. Right. Yep. 
Uh, it hasn't been on, I think we haven't mentioned it in the, uh, the Google Maps API blog, but we have mentioned it in uh, Geo Lat Long. So, uh, huh. it was in the Lat Long blog. But that's a good idea. We should do a, yep. right. uh, uh, the new tutorials. We should. Uh, yeah, there's so many blogs, it's hard to keep track of. <laughs> like, you right. know, I got them all on Google Reader, but they're, you know, they're so like, oh, we got a new blog, and then you go and have that in. <laughs> so I would recommend ends. Google that long and the Google Maps API blog. Truly, the Google Maps API blog is really Maps API plus KML. Yes. Uh, we just haven't really gotten around to telling people that. Right, now there's going to be another one, the KML one. I mean, you're going to no. have to no, branch it's, off. It's, it's going to be... Uh, <laughs> The, the KML one, KML is going to stay within the same, the Maps API blog. Yeah. It'll be the more like the Google Geo API blog. Right. Well, now with Google Maps doing everything. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> did your blink tag work? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I don't point. Know if we support, Let's I hope not. We support blink. Well, <laughs> Firefox supports blink. Yeah. So. But uh, I don't think we support it in the. Uh, in you Google think we Earth. strip it out? God, I hope, I oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't think we do support it in maps. I don't know. Mono's demo house. Wait, you ch you got yeah. rid of it anyway. Yeah. How am I supposed <laughs> to test it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can see how fun collaboration is. Yes. You should see what our meeting notes is like. This is what like. working at, uh, at Google is like, actually. It's sort of back and forth. Let me see. Let me go back to this. Okay. Yeah, I need to go back out of. Oh, dumb. <laughs> oh. It stripped it. The HTML wasn't there anymore. Oh, sad. I'm going to have to file a bug for that. <laughs> now, is it true? Like, is it still true that when you print the, like, if you use those cool icons, they don't print out? Like, in my experience, when, if you use, like, a normal icon that just has a letter on it or a dot, that one will print. But if you use the little volcano one, that one won't print. print. Is that... Right. Um, yeah. So when you print, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what happens when you print is that Google Maps will actually. So are you printing from file print? Or are you printing from this? Oh, one? you got to use that one. Yeah. yeah. File this one. Print. Okay. Wow. So when you do print, what that actually does is takes your map or whatever you're looking at and goes and generates, um, you know, baked in images. So like one flat image. Because right now what we're looking at here is a lot of HTML and DOM and stuff like that, um, which can be tricky mm -hmm. for browsers to print, like Firefox won't print SVG, um, which is like what we do the polylines and the polygons with, right? So when you click print, it goes and it creates uh, flat image files of whatever you're looking at. Now, uh, in the case of all these custom icons, you can imagine that um, that means that every time there's a custom icon, we have to go and add it to this uh, static map print server so that it understands it. Um, so you know, that's going to take some work to do. So sometimes, so, so eventually all those icons can like if you make your own custom icons with the with the Maps API, as long as you're doing that second thing that you're talking about, making a static image or whatever. Like I read something about it in the API, but it's hard to get stuff to print right. Printing right. Really yeah. No, hard. you can't actually really do that in the API, right? Right now, the pr the API doesn't provide any special mechanisms for printing. Um, so often when you print stuff from API sites, you'll have uh, you know medium success. Uh, if it's just markers, usually it's okay. Um, but if you've got, you know, polys, polygons, it depends on the browser, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's why I was saying, when in in, like in Google Maps, so if we <laughs> actually click on print right now, let's see what happens. I actually don't think much will show up. Like, you know when you do driving directions, it'll actually show you like a bunch of images in a row? Mm -hmm. So those are all just flat images that it's generated. And if you zoom in, like, why, why when you go to the print, doesn't it just disable zooming altogether? Because if you go there and then you mess around with that map that's there, then it won't print anything for sure. Actually, I use that feature all the time to readjust exactly what I want to see on the printout, but you're right. The, the yeah, then the icons. icons disappear, and then I have to write them in with a pen. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised. It works decently. Um, so it printed the icons, but not the polygons. So I yeah. believe what we're doing right, yeah, so that's the exact problem. Okay, so when you do driving directions, it does actually go and generate images in a row, right? And prints about, so driving directions usually look really good when you print them out. Now KML, I guess we've decided to just um, show you the map view and print it out and hope for the best. 
However, that means in Firefox that you're not going to get polys because Firefox uh, is SVG and won't print. Now, if we do this from IE, so this is the one time that we like to use IE. Yeah, that, I noticed that too. Like when you use IE, it does it better. Right. So printing is something that's not resolved yet. It's something we're still working on. You know, browsers are tricky. Maybe if they all, uh, you know, did the same thing, it'd be great. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, here we go. I probably should have done it not from the print screen, huh? Well, if we did it from IE, the polys would show up. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. It's about 7.30, which is when, which means our time's about up. Um, please take food with you. And... Uh, Right, so we can plug, right? So next week we're having a talk um, from one of the, uh, I would consider one of my top like Maps API developers, um, and he's flying in here from the Midwest. Uh, so and he's going to be talking about creating custom map types, um, and this is with the Maps API and creating tile layers on top of the Maps API. This is something you want to do. We're talking about right now, this like this stuff we've shown is good for a small amount of data. If you've got a huge amount of data, right, if you've got this the shapes of every single county in America, or if you've got, you know, the the voting information about every single citizen. You're not going to want to create markers out of all of those. What you're going to want to do is bake them into a tile layer, which is images, and uh, load them on the map that way. So he's going to be talking about that. Uh, he's got some a lot of sample code to show and a lot of really cool demos to show. So that's uh, I'm really excited about that one, actually. Um, so I encourage you to come to that and register if you haven't yet. And uh, this is a related topic. On the 29th of February, we're having a JavaScript API's hackathon. So this will include uh, maps, but also our um, our Ajax uh, APIs, uh, uh, gears. gadgets, gears, JavaScript client libraries, JavaScript client libraries for our G data applications. So uh, if you want more information about that, you know you can ask us afterwards. What what did when was that? Friday, February 29th is the hackathon. Yeah, from and, two um, o'clock on. Right, and the next uh, the next th event in the series will be next one, same so. time, same place, but next week. All right, thanks everybody. All right. Thank you.